What I thought um, we would do this morning, because I, I know uh, in, the, in the midst of trying to enjoy uh, your time, trying to work your day jobs or enjoy your family at home when you're occasionally away from here, I know you spend all of that waking time reading back through these bills and uh, marking them up in great detail. Um, I, I figured it might be helpful to have staff um, do a high level uh, walkthrough of the bill one more time. Um, I have had a few, uh, I'll tell you maybe at least one change I uh, know that we made, and then mention a couple conversations um, I've had with others. An unnamed folks like Representative Horn late nights um, or this morning um, and, and try to uh, highlight a couple things that may be helpful and uh, so with that I may uh, ask staff to just do a, a high level walk through of the bill and then we'll go from there. Yes, please do. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Representative O'Brien. Uh, Karen McCraw with the Research Division, sorry, Legislative Analysis Division. Um, if you go to page 17 in the report, you'll see the beginning of the bill draft. And so we'll work off of that in the page numbers for a minute. So the first section, 115C 75.5, creates the definitions for this bill. Um, of particular interest is probably the definition for qualifying schools, and that sets the parameters for the schools that can be considered for um, inclusion in the Achievement School District. And it has to be a low-performing school that meets one of the following criteria. So there's two ways the school can qualify. The first is that they receive the school performance score in the lowest 5% of all schools that have kindergarten through fifth grade in their um, school uh, coverage in the prior school year unless, and then they can be pulled back out of that group if they had exceeded growth and have at least one of the prior three school years and met growth in at least one of the prior three school years, or they were using one of the continually low-performing school models under 105.37b. The other option that would qualify a school is if they received a school performance score in the lowest 10% of all schools that serve kindergarten through fifth grade and had been designated by their local board for consideration as an achievement school. Then if you go to page 18, 115C-75.6 establishes the achievement school district, which would be the state level district, which will be under the management of the state or administration of the State Board of Education. And that section also provides the process for selection of the achievement school district superintendent. Uh, at the bottom of that page, 115C 75.7 establishes the process for how schools are selected to be included in the Achievement School District. Um, there is an evaluation process by the superintendent of the ASD to recommend schools to the State Board of Education for consideration. If the State Board selects a school as a prospective Achievement School, the local Board of Education has three options. They can choose to close that school to transfer the school into the ASD or request adoption of the principal turnaround model, which is one of the reform models for low performance schools. Um, further down that page, you'll also notice there's a section called waivers for AS schools. Once a, a, a school is transferred into the achievement school district, there is a provision that allows waivers to provide charter-like flexibility for those schools. The bottom of page 19, you'll see 115C 75.8. That establishes the process by which the State Board of uh, Education will select the AS operators who would run the achievement schools and establishes the criteria for their selection. Turn to page 20, 115C 75.9 provides some of the logistical requirements for management of achievement schools including how students would be assigned, facilities, transportation, and employment of those within the schools. If you continue to turn over then to page 22, that's the next statutory section, 115C 75.10 provides the process for how these schools will be funded. There are two options that would be selected at the discretion of the AS operator. The first is designated funding. This would allow the school to receive funding, a very similar process to how charters receive funding. The second option is a funding memorandum of understanding. 
and that would be an agreement between the local school system and the AS operator for a combination of services and funding based on what was received in the prior school year. Then at the bottom of page 23, 115C-75.11 requires the AS operators to establish certain um, achievement goals for those schools. You turn to page 24, 115C-75.12 establishes the parameters of contract terms for the achievement school operator. The default is a five-year contract with the AS operator, but there are provisions for early termination based on performance, for closure based on performance, for a possible optional extension of up to three years, and termination on other grounds such as financial mismanagement, criminal activity, etc. There is a limitation at the bottom of page 25 that no achievement school can remain under the supervision of the ASD for more than eight years. The bottom of page 25, 115C-75.13, establish innovation zones that may be discussed at the last meeting. If a local board of education has transferred a school into the ASD, then they may ask the state board to establish an innovation zone with up to three continually low performing schools in the district. And they would again have some additional flexibility and some requirements for how those schools would be managed. You turn to page 26. Um, there are some conforming changes on page 26, but you go to page 27, the next new <coughs> substantive provision is at the bottom of page 27 of the different turnaround or low performing schools models. There's a new model called the principal turnaround model, which establishes criteria. If the school had a low performing school, they could ask the state board to approve that they would use this principal turnaround model. You then turn to page 28. Um, there are some additional conforming changes, and then at the bottom of page 28, section 5 provides an evaluation process for the Achievement School District um, using an independent research organization after five years have passed in order to evaluate. Page 29 provides funding, both for the ASD superintendent, for the principal turnaround and reform model, a series of grants for schools, and then in section 8, um, additional money for innovation zone model grants and then the remainder of the bill is the effective date loss.